right now, I'm going to give a presentation. This is a case study on using multi-volume training in our flagship product, Interactive AI, to generate superior interpretations from pretty messy data. So what is multi-volume training? Essentially what multi-volume training means is you start with a label set, a single label set. You add multiple input data sets to the network and you train on these data sets in parallel to generate a combined inference that comes out. So there's some clear advantages uh, to this. You, you start with a more robust training set because you have the additional input data volumes. Multi-volume training also, because it's sensitive to those other volumes, it captures minute detail and small changes in the seismic waveform that can translate into features in the subsurface that are pretty important. In this specific uh, case study, I'll be using seismic attributes as the other input volumes, but it's not only attributes you can use. You can use angle stacks, you can use uncertainty volumes, QI, inversion volumes, there's an endless combination of different input data sets you can use to train these multi-volume networks. So multi-volume training allows you to identify some unique co-locations or correlations of specific attribute anomalies, which gives you a lot of insight into what your data is telling you. So we're listening to the data tell us the story. Multi-volume training also accelerates your training by orders of magnitude, and the additional information coming from those uh, multiple input volumes means that you, your network is tuned more accurately to your specific seismic data. This case study is from the Solimoes Basin. It's in Brazil, like right in the middle of Brazil, and this thing is huge. This is almost a half million square kilometers in size, with five billion barrels of un, uh, undiscovered oil and 47 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. This is a massive basin, all right? And this qualifies as what we call a super basin. But there's a catch. As there is with most super basins, there's, there's a catch to this. And the catch in the Solomoish Basin is the presence of these volcanic sills. If you look at the image on the lower right, I've circled what sills are, and essentially sills are igneous in intrusions, volcanic intrusions that are parallel to subparallel to bedding. And the impact that those have on your data is they make it very ugly. So if you look at the seismic line that I just showed here, we can see that there, after, after this interval at top, there's a, a very sharp degradation in the seismic data quality that we have and in the imaging and what we can see in the amplitude data. The standing interpretation, if you will, the, the manual interpretation of these dikes is shown on the, uh, these sills is shown on the left. Uh, ignore the white boxes with the text. This is just an image I took from Baker et al, 2015. And one thing that we can see immediately is the oversimplification of these interpretations. These sills have been interpreted as massive, continuous, through-going features, and there's not a lot of complexity shown in the manual interpretation. The volcanics in the Solomoas Basin, they're, they're a blessing and a curse. It's a double-edged sword in a way. On one hand, these sills provide the top closure mechanism for the reservoirs. So without these sills, there wouldn't be reservoirs in the area. On the other hand, like we saw before, it wipes out the seismic data quality, and more importantly, these volcanics present a big risk to drilling operations. If drillers aren't expecting to hit hard volcanic rock, they're not going to be prepared for it. So it's very, very important in basins like this to come up with the most detailed interpretation that you can of these features. So if we look at the manual interpretation and the general character, let's compare that to what interactive AI can do. In this video here, the yellow is inference from the single volume network that was trained only on the amplitudes, and the red or orange is the multi-volume results. 
So we can tell right off the bat that the multi-volume training is giving us a lot more detail. It's breaking apart different sills and different levels, and it's giving us a more detailed view of what to expect in the subsurface. These subtle changes to sill geometry when we're in an area where a half cycle is 15 meters, these count. It's important to, to capture this detail. The methodology that, I, uh, that we used for the volcanic sills, this is the same methodology you'd use for any multi-volume network. So it's very, very flexible. And the number one thing that you want to do is choose the other input data types appropriately for the, the question you're trying to answer. In our case, we're trying to resolve volcanic sills, and also we're trying to resolve faults that are below those sills in an area where the amplitude data is completely wiped out. So we'd use some kind of um, seismic component analysis, like PCA or ICA, to decide which one of these attributes is relevant to the feature that you're looking at. In our case, with volcanics, we're looking at energy attributes. These affect the energy of the seismic waveform. For faults, you'd use edge detection, reservoirs, the amplitude and frequency, and things like that. And then stratigraphy, you're looking at sort of uh, continuity attributes. Once you define the different uh, input volumes you want to use in multi-volume training, you just import those to interactive AI as VDS layers. And these are essentially just extra seismic volumes you have in your session. And then you apply those to a deep learning layer. So you can see in the middle image, number three, I have three different volumes selected to do the training on. The amplitude, diffraction energy, and reflection intensity. We'll get into why I chose those attributes in the next slide. Once you've identified the uh, different input volumes you want to train on, you just train the network like you normally would and you interact with it as necessary, and the results that you're going to be getting are a lot more crisp and detailed than the results that you would get from just the amplitude data alone. Here's another view of the results for the volcanic sills. On the left in yellow, we see a network that was trained only on the amplitude data for 16 minutes. On the right, we see the multi-volume results trained on amplitude, the diffraction energy attribute, and reflection intensity for two minutes. There's an order of magnitude improvement on the speed at which you can generate these accurate interpretation objects. So the multi-volume training for the SILs identified the contact geometry very, very well, top and base contacts. You can see if you look, if you look closely on the right, side of these images, you can see there's a mass transport complex with the volcanics overlaying on top. And that comes from the multi-volume training. You don't get that detail by looking just at the amplitude data. And the bottom image shows the difference between the two. The orange is an overlap area. And one thing I'd like to point out is multi-volume training allowed us to pick up these smaller fault-related sills underneath the major volcanic events in an area with uh, pretty poor data quality. So we started with one label set. We defined the three different input data sets, and we created a single output inference, which you see in red. What kind of effect do volcanics have on your seismic energy? Well. They diffract energy, they respond, the, the contacts respond very well to changes in impedance. So we landed on a reflection intensity attribute and a diffraction energy attribute to train this, this volume, to train this network on all three volumes at the same time. So by leveraging these additional attribute volumes, we were able to improve the network predictions along with the speed at which we can generate them and like I said before, in, in areas where a half cycle of seismic is 15 meters, these small details count. They're very important. We applied the same multi-volume methodology to faults. 
underneath these volcanic sills. So if I back up just a little bit, let's look at the data quality. This is the data that I'm trying to identify faults in. Very difficult. Now, to add complexity to the fact that the imaging is very poor, these faults are strike slip as well. So there's little to no offset in amplitudes when you're going through and interpreting these features. So these strike slip uh, faults, they're hard to interpret to begin with. When you're dealing with data that's just been completely washed out by velocity inversion effects in the shallow section, it's very, very tricky to do this. The amplitude data alone doesn't do a really well job of capturing the position and geometry of these faults. But a multi-volume network that uses edge detection volumes, in this case chaos and variance, produces a much better, sharper, more geologically feasible result than amplitude data only. So here are the results from the sub-volcanic faults. The amplitude, the single volume amplitude network is on the left. And if I could pick one word to describe this inference, it would be diffuse. If I could pick another word, it would be confusing or misleading. And this is after 33 minutes of training a single volume network on this data. The data quality is just that bad. Now let's compare that with the multi-volume results we get from the faulting. This is four minutes of training on amplitude, chaos, and variance. And you can see the difference between the character of the fault predictions from single volume to multi-volume. And the difference is down here below. So the workflow is the same. We have a controlling label set, a governing label set. And we've identified multiple input volumes to train the network on in parallel to generate a single multi-volume inference, which is blue right here. The attributes that we've chosen to do the fault work are related to the chaos and variance. So these two attributes are very good at picking up where faults are interrupting the lateral continuity of the seismic. And the multi-volume training provided a lot more network, a lot more information to the network that allowed it to make much more uh, detailed predictions. Another thing to notice is that we were able to pick up the strike slip faults. Strike slip faults to begin with in the best, best data are very hard to interpret over a large area. But using multi-volume training and interactive AI in four minutes of our time, we were able to create a 3D network of these strike slip faults. The results were the uh, basement faults that we extracted from the data line up perfectly with the feeder systems for these sills. The volcanics that we mapped correspond very precisely with where we have them tagged in the well data. And we were able to make effective use of the seismic attribute volumes in training. And these are the faults, these are the strike slip faults that I was talking about before. And you can see what a clean, large area we've been able to extract these faults over. So these poorly imaged faults, the poorly imaged cells, can be identified very, very quickly and accurately through the use of multi-volume training, much better than you could uh, resolve them with traditional deep learning methods or, if you have enough time, manual interpretation, which would be exceedingly difficult in this type of data. So why, why is interactive AI and multi-volume training in particular, why does this add value to your workflow at the end of the day? Well, first, the flexibility and responsiveness of these networks allow you to try out several different scenarios. So you're not limited to working on two or three different scenarios to do your pre-drill uh, de-risking on. You can test a bunch of different data combinations, network combinations, loss functions, very, very fast, which gives you more time to spend actually looking at the output and thinking about it. Generating the output is only part of what we're doing. We have to look at that output, we have to put it in geologic context, and come up with a well plan that honors that, that data. So the multi-volume training 
as you can see in the sills, it definitely elevates the precision of these predictions, which gives you more confidence. Because interactive AI starts with networks that don't know anything, it learns everything from you. And that means your confidence carries over into these prediction results. You're the one defining the training set, you're the one defining what's important, so the results coming out, you can have a high degree of confidence that those are accurate. Going back to the scenarios, you can now compare these multiple scenarios that you've run to pick out not only P105090, but something like P125050, 75, and 100 which also enables you to integrate calculated volumes like petrophysical data, uncertainty volumes, uh, inversion, QI. You can fold all of these different calculated volumes back into the network training by using the multi-volume training in interactive AI.